When we think about packaging, what's the first thing that most people think of? Yes, uh, but I need a design. So in terms of design-wise, you could go to a external company um, creating templates for you where you can put on uh, graphics or you can invest into a what we call a template library. Uh, there are several out there. You can even buy them each uh, separately. So if you want to have a specific box, you can just buy one box. Now, what Summa does for you is give you access to a large uh, library for free. So if we go to the software, the software itself is called Packlip. So let me open up Packlip here. So Packlip, the only thing you need to do is register your unit or your machine on the website, and then you will be able to install this on your computer. There's no limitation on how many installs you do because they're all linked to that same unit. Now, looking at uh, the software itself, this is basically a database of different templates. So looking at these different folders, there are two very important ones, especially if we talk about uh, packaging. Uh, let me just quickly switch off the vacuum because uh, otherwise this might interfere with me talking. Um, so look here, uh, these two folders are, let's say, for packaging in interesting or important. It's ECMA and FEFCO. ECMA is basically, to make it very simple, is uh, what you would uh, cut on thick, plain uh, cardboard. So not corrugated cardboard, just standard plain cardboard. For instance, 265 grams of paper, 300 grams of paper, very thick paper, basically. FEFCO, on the other hand, is different. FEFCO is more what you uh, see as a standard box, uh, cut or increased, of course, uh, on corrugated cardboard. So if you have corrugated cardboard of, it, uh, of a certain type, you can actually have a FEFCO design on there. Even if you go to a uh, manufacturer of cardboard boxes, you will be able to choose, uh, let's say I need uh, FEFCO uh, 0330, and then he will know what kind of shape you want. The only thing you need to tell him is, of course, the size of the box, because all these sizes are adjustable. Uh, furthermore, if we look uh, closer to the other uh, folders here, we have everything ranging from displays. Uh, if I click on this, you will see different kinds of displays, so POS, POP displays, or even uh, re uh, honeycomb boards or reboard. Here it's uh, Zanita. Uh, Zanita is a other manufacturer of a reboard type or a honeycomb board of an inverted corrugated cardboard um, and then you will have to, uh, sorry then you will see uh, several other uh, designs even nice sofas you can try it out the only thing is you will need to cut it using that type of material uh. now going back to fefco because we're into packaging it's the uh, festive season the season to be jolly uh, the season for gifts of course uh, and I have several gifts that I want to, uh, let's say, uh, create boxes for. Mm. Now, if we look closely, we have a, a complete selection of boxes. I know which one I'd like. Uh. So if I go to the 400 series and specifically the 470, this is a box I like to cut because it looks nice. I don't need glue, very important. I don't need glue to, uh, to assemble it. I uh, this box just uses flaps that I can fold, bend, and of course uh, make the box out of. So 470, uh, if I click on the folder, you see two um, icons. The right one is a 3D representation. Mm. This is not using any graphics that you've created. This is just a 3D representation on how to make the box. So when I click on it, you will notice a 3D video starting how to assemble the box. Uh, so this is just included in the software. The only thing you need to have is Adobe Reader on your uh, computer. So once I'm at this level, I should know how to assemble the box. But this is not what I want, because I want to cut this. Uh. Uh, for this, I need to have the other icon. So let's go to the main folder, and I click on this one. And here you can see this is the template design. Now, the template design is, of course, 
uh, showing me a, a box of a specific size. I want it slightly different. So if you look on the right hand side of the screen, all of a sudden my box changes because when I hover over one parameter, it shows me what items are going to change. We, If you're a bit familiar with, with uh, packaging, you will know that if you change the width of a box, it will uh, have influence on other parts of the box. So because this is a completely parametric template database, you can actually start to adjust everything. So I need the box where I can fit in a item, which is about 20 centimeters by 10 centimeters high by 20 centimeters deep. So this is my box. Mm. This flap is for my, let's say, personal opinion, uh, slightly too big, so I'll slightly reduce it. And this adjusts my design completely. Now, this is my box template for this size. So the, the, the item I'm putting inside the box is going to be 20 by 20 by 10. Now, the only thing I need to do uh, is select my type of uh, cardboard, corrugated cardboard. So when I click on profile, you will see several uh, levels. You see E, B, C, A. Well, these are uh, basically uh, the references for different kinds of cardboards. Uh, looking at E, this is the thinnest cardboard uh, available. Uh, you can add your own quite easily, but uh, E um, equals 1.5 millimeter. Uh, so either you know the corrugation flute uh, reference or you know the thickness of your material. So in this case, I know I'm using E flute, which is nice material, very thin, very uh, stable. And when I select this, uh, the complete design has been added. Just look at these creasing lines. If I go to A, for instance, these are further apart. So just by changing my profile of material, it changes my design as well. Uh, now, when I want to cut this, I have two choices. Huh? Uh, actually, three choices. Uh, one is I immediately send to Suma. So this will create a cuttable file, including material information that I can use within, uh, let's say, GoProduce. Mm. So when I import this in GoProduce, it will automatically select the right material. All my methods have been selected correctly. So the only thing I need to do is import and cut. That's all. The other possibility is to export this as either a DXF, a PDF, or an Illustrator file. Why? Well, as you can see, there is no, uh, let's say, uh, tools in here, there are no tools in here to add graphics. So if you want to add your personalized graphics, you can actually import this in Illustrator. W when you import this in Illustrator, you have all your design, f uh, let's say, design tools at your disposal. You can even use Photoshop, you can even use CorelDRAW. Huh? As long as you have the template, you can add your graphics. Huh? Now, this is not what I wanted because I want to ha actually um, optimize my board. Huh? So uh, left of this uh, nice export icon, I have my layout icon. When I click on this, it will take my design and optimize it for my sheet size. Huh? So there are, I, I've already have uh, three sheet sizes pre-configured. So when I select, for instance, 1600 by 1800, it will automatically recalculate and give me Okay, you can fit four designs on this. I can uh, peruse through the other options. Huh? As you can see, it tries to nest everything slightly different, but it keeps giving me four. Hmm? I can uh, change the spacing in between the different shapes as well. It re immediately recalculates, and what I can do is I can export this as a PDF. Huh? Why as a PDF? Because when you do a nest like this, you generally are going to add, for instance, uh, some graphics to it. Uh, um, I have another option here, because if you want to, let's say, um, have a specific yield of boxes from, a, from a, a sheet, when I click on number of rows and columns, by default it's 4 by 4 but I can change it to, for instance, 2 by 2 
it gives me the best or the most fitting uh, board size. So here you can see I need to have a board about 124 by 128 centimeters in size. And then this will give me the best yield without too much waste. Uh, now, let's just go back to our predefined board and I'll, I'll press PDF. So what I'm doing here uh, is I'm going to save this as Holiday Jewel. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, that is my mistake. I didn't want to save this as Holiday Jewel. Uh, yes, uh, that's no problem. Uh, let's go to um, co-produce. So when I go to co-produce and I press import and I select that file here. Ah, no. Uh, when I select that file, my mistake. You will notice that it immediately uh, generates my different methods. So I have two methods here because I'm not on cardboard. It just assigns different tools to it. The only thing I need to do before I output is of course select my material and then I delete this uh, sheet, uh, sorry, sheet size because it gives me the sheet size as well. This is just for a reference. Now, uh, because I overwritten my file there, I just need to go back to my original design. So give me a moment here. You see, we're live. We sometimes t make mistakes. So when I um, so this will give me uh, four boxes on my sheet, and it will cut and crease everything with the same tool. So it will take the same creasing wheel, and it will take the same um, cutting uh, tool. Now, this is not what I wanted to show you because uh, one of the misconceptions in cardboard is that you can only use an EOT, an electronic oscillating tool, to cut corrugated cardboard. In general, this is what we advise. Always use an EOT. However, in some cases, uh, an EOT will be well, slow. Uh, if you go to a full production um, setup, this will be slower than having a what I call a passive knife because the oscillation will reduce your uh, cutting speed. Uh, your we, we can't oscillate that fast to go to one meter per second. Uh. So uh, the maximum cutting speed we have on an EOT is about 300 millimeter per second. Mm. If you go to a passive knife, this is one meter per second. So if you have a, uh, let's say, a high volume job that you need to finish very quickly, you can use a cutout knife. Now, why don't we advise this? Because you will need to replace your knives a lot. Uh, because um, cutting paper, uh, cutting cardboard, is quite abrasive for your knife. And if you do this with a static knife, your knife will heat up quite quickly and it will uh, it, its lifetime will be reduced quite quickly as well. If you go to an EOT, an EOT will saw your material. But because it's doing a uh, oscillating move, so a jigs like a jigsaw cutter, it, the knife goes up and down. It will actually, um, let's say, spread out the wear and your knife will last a lot longer. Additional benefit is that the knives on an EOT are a lot, let's say, smaller in size, so you can cut smaller details. So a few things to consider when you're, um, when you're uh, cutting cardboard is, uh, do I cut small details do I need to cut fast or what um, um, do I need to do? So uh, let's go to the file I've prepared because that file is the dual one here. So I press open. I just need to rotate this. Voila. Now you will notice a few things. First of all, I have three layers or three um, methods. Uh, crease, through cut and through cut alt. Because it's a PDF, I don't have material information. If it was a SGP file, uh, I can I can automatically add that material. So the only thing I need to do now as an operator is select my cardboard. So corrugated cardboard, e-flute. All of a sudden, I have all different tools assigned to the different methods. Looking closely, creasing will be done all with the same tool. However, cutting, the left one will be cut using a Let's hover over it, a heavy-duty cutout, and the right one will be cut with an EOT. So 
before we um, let's say before we start to cut this, uh, let's load up the material. Uh, so I go back to access control. In access control, I have this load button, and this will allow me to reposition my uh, let's say beam or my cutting head. Uh, when I uh, I prefer to put it on the right rear. This is just personal preference. If I press start, it will move the beam to the back, and it will give me more than enough room to load up my board. So let me take.